Hello everyone, we have some good news regarding the state of California in a court case. I know, it seems very surprising most of the time when I come to you with news about the state of California, it's bad news. But today in the lawsuit Nguyen versus Bonta, the court case challenging the one firearm purchase per 30 days, we actually have some good news. Now there's gonna be a period of time before this ruling sort of takes effect into any practical manner. We're gonna talk about that and we're gonna talk about some of the likely outcomes. Before we do though, if you wanna support this channel, check out Last Shot AZ. They're an ammo seller that works with the state of California. If you have an FFL03 and a COE, they will ship to you. If you have a local gun store that you like to work with, they will ship to them. Also, if you get your COE and FFL03, like I described in my video talking about that specifically, you will be exempt from this one in 30 day restriction, regardless of how this court case pans out as of right now. So let's talk about this order. Nguyen v. Bonta, it is a Second Amendment Foundation and a Firearms Policy Coalition court case. And we got a favorable ruling from Judge William Hayes, who is a Bush appointee. Shocking, I know that most of these court cases that we get good rulings are from Republican appointed judges. I know, it's very surprising. We're gonna read the last part of this order so that we can keep this fairly short. And then we're gonna kind of describe to you what this all means in a practical sense, since most of you probably don't want to try to figure this out on your own and you want an explain like I'm five answer. And I'm sure that's why you come to this channel anyway. Let me know in the description or in the comments. It is further ordered that the plaintiff's motion for summary judgment is granted. No later than seven days from the date of this order is filed, the party shall file a proposed judgment consistent with this order and include language that enforcement of the judgment is stayed for 30 days to facilitate an appeal. So what does this mean? 30 days, this order is stayed. After 30 days, one of the two outcomes will happen. Outcome A, which is good, is that after 30 days, the one in 30 restriction is not a thing anymore, pending the rest of this court case, and you can buy multiple firearms in a 30 day period. As it stands currently, if you do not have a COE and an FFL03 in the state of California, and you're not purchasing private party firearms, going through a gun store but purchasing it from a private party, you can only start a background check on any firearm once in a 30 day period. There's no exemptions for receivers, it's no longer just about handguns, any firearm in the state of California, one in 30 days. If there is no long-term stay put on this and this ruling goes into effect, you will not be limited to how many firearms you can purchase in a 30 day period of time, which is great. However, the likely outcome, outcome B, is that the state of California is going to file for a stay. They're probably already working on it. They probably already had it written. And the state of California is gonna to appeal to the Ninth Circuit. Ninth Circuit is likely gonna uh, allow that stay to go into effect and it'll be business as usual, which is why I recommend you still get a COE and an FFL03 in the state of California because you can also, in many locations, have ammo shipped to your door as well as not having to worry about the one in, one in 30 day restrictions to begin with. So if you're, if you're interested in that, check out my video on it. This is a big court case. Not having any sort of firearm rationing laws on the books would be great. The state of California tried to argue a few things that they try to argue in every court case because, because of Bruin, they have to use text, history, and tradition and find historical analogs of these laws. They tried saying that the black powder storage requirements from a long ass time ago were relevant. They tried saying that laws restricting Native Americans from purchasing firearms were relevant. However, the judge didn't really agree with that because in addition to it just being kind of racist and whatnot, since those laws were deemed unconstitutional in a variety of other ways, you can't, you know, tell people that they can't own guns because of the color of their skin, it's unlikely that the judge is gonna side with this and he did not. So that's good, right? I think we would all agree that not allowing a ban on firearms just because you're Native American, you know, would that affect me? I'm technically 1 16th, I think, Native American. Would I be unable to purchase firearms under that law? Who knows? But it's great to see some good progress at the district level. However, don't hold your breath. With most of these court cases, it's a long road. Like the court cases that I'm involved in, I'm expecting these to take five years or so, from the time that it started to the time that it's done. The Supreme Court is likely gonna have some decisions that are relevant, possibly affecting this, and it's a long road ahead of us. Don't hold your breath. If you want to avoid the one in 30 day restriction completely already, people are getting their COE and FFL03 in 
maybe a month, two months max from what I've heard lately. And that's good because after that, you would be able to avoid this entirely and have ammo shipped to your door. I think a big reason that people don't quite understand why this is so relevant, in the state of California, as of July 1st, 11% tax on guns and ammo is being added to the cost. It's likely gonna mean that a larger than 11% increase is coming on all your firearm sales, all your ammunition sales in the state of California. So prices are going up, meaning people will likely be able to buy less. It's kind of be, gonna be a cyclical pattern of, in addition to the gun stores can only sell to a consumer one firearm per 30 days, now that consumer is gonna have multiple reasons why they might not want to purchase more firearms. So if they have to sell less, they might have to sell it at a higher price, which then further leads people to buying less guns. The state of California is trying to add a lot of friction to every step of the process of owning a firearm, just like the law or the bill that we talked about recently that would add registration fees yearly to every firearm that is in the state of California. So we see this friction, the friction is getting more frictiony, and uh, it's only seemingly getting worse, which is why supporting court cases and supporting the organizations like the CRPA, Second Amendment Foundation, Gun Owners of America, and Firearms Policy Coalition is great to do. Send them a couple bucks whenever you get a chance. You guys know the drill. Have fun, be safe, stay dangerous. Peace.